Hi and welcome. I know we all love these little fur babies that we call part of our family. And I am excited to share with you a recipe that's going to help support their pancreas. And a lot of dogs get pancreatitis. And if your dog has that, then I have the recipe for you. And even if your dog doesn't have anything wrong with their pancreas, it's good to support all their different organs. And that's what a lot of my recipes are doing. So let's get to our pancreatitis and pancreas support recipe. Say bye-bye, Molly. Thanks for visiting. Today, I'm going to help you prepare a recipe for your dogs that is good for their pancreas. And it also supports dogs that might have Cushing's disease or diabetes as well. And it's an overall very well-balanced meal. So if your dog doesn't have any ailments, you can feed this still to the dogs. And I'm going to feed this to all five of my dogs. None of them have diabetes or pancreatitis or Cushing's disease or diabetes for that matter, but it is an overall great meal for them. This is my friend Charlie. He's usually my assistant when I cook and so that is no different today. So let's get to our ingredients that we need. So we're going to head over to my kitchen island. As you all know, I have five dogs. My name is Jen Lee and this is my gentastic journey in a semi-retirement. A big part of that is helping my dogs to live their happiest, healthiest lives. And that includes making nutritious food for them. So let's get started with some of our ingredients. The first ingredient and the main ingredient in this recipe is going to be turkey. It would be boneless, skinless turkey. So however you wanna purchase, I chose to purchase it as ground turkey. I shop for my dogs like I shop for my family. So that means anything that looks good and healthy and is on sale would be my best option. As I mentioned, I have five dogs, and so it gets very expensive to feed them, just like it did when I had five kids living at home, which I no longer do, but it's an expensive time, so we need to stretch our dollar. And so this uh, was on sale, and it's ground turkey. It's 93% lean, which is fine, and turkey and chicken tend to be lean. Uh, my dogs don't do well with chicken, it causes an allergy outbreak for my one dog, so turkey is the leanest type of meat that I feed for them. You will need one pound of turkey, whether it's ground or otherwise. So one pound of turkey. The next ingredient is butternut squash, and you will need four to six ounces of butternut squash. This comes in a pack that is 12 ounces, so I will Normally, if I was cooking for one dog, would cut this in half and give them half as butternut squash. If you don't have butternut squash, you can use pumpkin or you can use sweet potatoes. Be careful with the sweet potatoes if your dog is overweight or has a diabetic condition. Squash or pumpkin is better in those scenarios, lower in sugar. The next ingredient is calf liver and you will need three ounces of calf liver. So I'm gonna put this on a scale and measure it out. These come in individual packs. It's 16 ounces in total and I have four in here. So that makes it pretty easy to determine it as well. If you don't have a food scale, you can figure it out pretty easily. This just is calf liver that I get from my grocery store. You will also need chicken or turkey gizzards and you will need six ounces of chicken or turkey gizzards. Also, if it's available in your area, beef pancreas is great for this recipe. I am not able to purchase that, but if I did have dogs with pancreatitis, I would certainly find a supplier that had pancreas. Beef pancreas would be the best option. And you would need a very small amount in this recipe. It's two ounces, so if you could purchase a small amount of beef pancreas, that would be great. If you've seen my other videos, you know that any ailment that your dog is having in an organ of their body, it is always good to feed them that organ in their food. And that would be usually in the form of beef, or if your dogs tolerate turkey or chicken, then those would be fine as well. Typically, Dr. Judy Morgan, who is one of the vets, the holistic vets that I follow, she will usually go for beef organs. So beef heart, if they have a heart condition, beef liver, if they have a liver condition. In this scenario, if you have a dog that has pancreatitis 
Cushing's disease or diabetes, then it's good to give them beef pancreas as well. And that would just be two ounces added in. And you'll see that I do process the food with a food processor when I'm done cooking it. And therefore everything is chopped very finely. You wanna make sure that you're chopping any of your meats and organs very finely. Same with all of your vegetables. I just happen to do it in a food processor so it makes it super easy and I do it after I cook it when everything is nice and soft. So it certainly makes it a lot easier for the food processor. All right, on to our next ingredient. We have asparagus, and I chose to purchase asparagus cuts, and this is from my local grocery store. You will only need two ounces of this, so a very small amount, and the rest of it will leave for another time. You will also need some shiitake mushrooms. You will need four ounces of shiitake mushrooms. So we'll put shiitake mushrooms in there as well. This is fresh ginger, you'll need one tablespoon of ground ginger or grated ginger. And so I will grate this myself into a little bowl and that will be added to our recipe as well. And then our last, ooh, I just poured kale all over the place. And the final ingredient for our recipe is kale. And this would be chopped kale. And that's what I have here as well. So we're gonna get to measuring this and putting this into the crock pot. Again, three ounces of kale. I am going to make this recipe much larger because I do have five dogs, but we'll get it all put into the crock pot and then I will show you what that looks like. I put everything into the crock pot and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So let me turn the camera around. All right, so you can see underneath there is our ground turkey. I've got our asparagus. I've got some cubed butternut squash. I've got some of our mushrooms and some of the kale. And also on either side, I have a chunk of liver. Again, I'm making this for five dogs, so it's a lot of food, but this is how I put it in the crock pot. And then I'm going to put one cup of water on top of this. So I'll flip it back around and you can see the rest of the process. All right, and then I'm going to take a cup of water and I'm gonna pour that over our big meal for the dogs. All right, and again, you're gonna to wanna to use an amount that makes sense with your crock pot and cut that down if that's a little bit too much. The regular amount for one dog, you might wanna just put in a half a cup of water or whatever you need to make sure that that consistency is perfect for your dog food. So we're gonna put this on low for eight hours and then we will come back and I will show you the second part of the process. While we're waiting for this to cook, I just wanted to let you know that if you'd like to see more information about my beautiful pups, They've been making little cameo appearances in my videos for a long time, but I've got a video about all five of our rescues and you can check that out. We've got two labs and we've got three Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Also, if you'd like to see why I gently cook food and some of the reasons why we use some of these nutrients and some of this food for our dogs, you can click on the link to my very first video, which is a little bit longer and goes into a lot of what you wanna put in for your dog food for a regular dog food recipe. And then also it's got lots of tips and tricks on what to use and what not to use. I've also got several other videos and I'll link that playlist at the end and you can go back and look and see if I've got a video recipe for an ailment that your dog might have. I've got one for heart support, liver support. I've got one for regular dog food and different types of meats that I use for those different dog food recipes. If you don't see something for your dog's health ailment, please give me a comment below and I will make sure I get a recipe out in short order. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in about eight hours. While we're waiting for this to cook, I'm gonna ask a favor of you. Please hit the like button if you enjoy this type of content and share this out to your friends. Everybody wants their dogs to live their happiest, healthiest lives. So share this out to those who you think might be able to use this. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I am a small channel and that's 
certainly helps me out. So thank you so much. And I hope to continue to bring you content that you find valuable. Let's get back to it. Okay, welcome back. So our food looks very nice and cooked. And I will bring this a little closer so you can see what that looks like. All right, so definitely cooked, have lots of nice juices in here. And the next thing we need to do is we need to prepare it and get it ready to put in our bowl. And this bowl is uh, something that I use for my dog's food. It's a plastic container. I wait until my food has cooled quite a bit. So I give it a couple of hours with it unplugged. It just is nice and warm. That way it's safer for me and it's not going to be a problem in my plastic container. A couple of things before we get this started. If you have dogs that have perfectly great teeth, then you can actually just put this right in here and just mix it up really good. Make sure all those vegetables get kind of mixed up and pulverized that way and put it in your, your bowl and the meat should be really, really nice and moist and easy to work with. I have dogs with very few teeth. In fact, I have one that only has four teeth and they're all in different spots so they don't really work together. So I actually put my food in a food processor and that just works really well for me really well for my dogs. It's one extra step. It takes an additional five minutes or so. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. While I'm doing that, I did wanna tell you about some additional foods that you can use for pancreatitis or to just promote good health in your dog's pancreas. I'm gonna grab my food processor. This is my food processor. It is a Magicos brand food processor. I've had it for years and it has never done me wrong. It is one of those things where I really appreciate their customer service as well. I did drop this whole container and I broke it and they sent me another one for free. And that was really awesome, especially because I bought this off of Amazon. I didn't buy this directly through the company and they still honored that. And I was really, really happy with their customer service, very quick to respond as well. So this is what I use to just grind up all this, process all this food. And so I'm gonna plug this in and get this ready to go. Now, if you use any supplements that are okay to be put into their food, then this would be the time to do that. I use several supplements and primarily because I have dogs with different ailments, I've rescued all my dogs and they've come to me with different ailments. And we do tend to rescue dogs that maybe need a little TLC because we feel that we have the desire to do that and the means to do that. So it's one of the things that gives me great joy in life is to watch these dogs go from being unhealthy and sad and scared to being full of life and vibrant and living their best healthiest lives so i do put supplements in my food and i put it just directly in here because it makes it easy for me it makes it easy for the dogs it makes it easy for my husband that feeds them in the evening feeding i feed my dogs twice a day I feed them half of their amount in the morning and half of their amount in the evening, pretty much 12 hours apart. So we usually feed about 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. That just works really well for us. Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. It's been said that you really don't want them to be too terribly hungry. And I actually have one of them that her stomach growls right when we're getting ready for bed, but I can't feed them much later than that. So 7 p.m. seems to work well for everybody involved. All right, so I promised you a couple of extra foods that you can mix into your food regimen. So if I were going to, if I had a dog with pancreatitis, my next batch would include something like white fish and some of the other similar ingredients are fine. Also broccoli is really good. A little teeny bit of coconut oil is good. As I mentioned before, you can do the butternut squash. You can do canned pumpkin. Uh, I have that over here because that's usually my go-to, but this time I use squash, butternut squash. You can also use sweet potatoes if your dogs don't have any problem with sugar or diabetes, things like that, or have a weight problem. I don't typically use sweet potatoes very often, once in a very blue moon, just because I do like to mix things up for the dogs and make sure that their bodies are getting lots of different types of nutrients. So white fish is really good. Again, turkey, chicken, if your dogs can handle chicken, 
chicken is nice and lean for them. So if your dog does have pancreatitis, mix up those proteins every time you make a new batch. A batch for me lasts about three days because I do have five dogs, so it's a it's a lot to feed five dogs. I will next get out my supplements. Okay, so these are my supplements. I use a brand called RX Essentials for pets, and these are the RX Vitamins for pets. This has a very nice blend of vitamins, and it also tells you, based on the number of pounds your dog is, how much you want. And so I figured that out for my dogs, and I put it directly into the batch. To be more precise, you'd want to put it directly onto their food. Just with five dogs, it's a lot for us to try and do that with all these different supplements. So I do tend to put it in. This is the actually the canine minerals. And the canine minerals are a great supplement. If you're going to give anything to your dogs, canine minerals is fantastic. And again, we have Charlie over here co-hosting for us. And then back there on the couch in her favorite spot is Brie. Brie is also a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, and I'll show you the other two in just a minute. Molly's over here. Let's see if we can bring the camera over here. Here's Molly down here. So she's our other Cavalier. It's Jaxie down here. This is my Black Lab Jax, and Molly is a hog of attention. <laughs> so Hazel is upstairs in our loft, just taking a nap. So those are four of the five. Okay, the next supplement I use is RX Essentials, and this is RX Vitamins. So this is the vitamin supplement. And I always put everything in the description box below. So if you're looking for any of this, please look there. I spend a lot of time on my description box so that you guys can see what you need here. There are some minerals in the vitamin supplement but not all the ones that we need. And the minerals are the most important thing, the thing that's hardest to get into the food. I also use a kelp supplement. And if you watch my other videos, I explain why I use all of these supplements. I also use a mushroom extract powder, and this has seven different mushrooms in it. Again, that is also in my other videos. And then the other thing that I put into my dog food is blueberries. And I do that because of the weepy eyes of the Cavaliers. It helps them very much to keep those weepy eyes from staining. I also make sure that when I put water in their water bowls, that I use filtered water. So it just makes a big difference for them. All right, so those are the supplements I put into this batch directly. And we'll do that in just a second. I also wanted to take a second and show you what I put into their food at each feeding. The more I can put into the batch directly, the better off we are, because there's a lot for these dogs. So for the Cavaliers, I do feed them a COQ10 supplement, and that's for their hearts because they all have mitral valve disease. I also give them a five leaf pet and this is called Pet Protect. They also have a specific one for hearts and I swap between the two, so I buy both. And this is just a supplement to keep their hearts strong and all of their other organs strong. So I really, really like this supplement. This is also uh, something that Dr. Judy Morgan promotes as well on her website. And you can go to Dr. Judy Morgan's website and purchase a lot of these things. I also feed them or give them Four Leaf Rover hip and joint. This is a hip and joint supplement. I've got two older labs. And so this is perfect for them. And then my vet also said every older dog should have a joint supplement. My Cavaliers are six, seven, and eight. My labs are nine and 10. So they're all due for a hip and joint supplement. And I've tried a million of them. This one really seems to work, especially for my chocolate lab. She has the most joint pain. And this one seems to help her the most. A recent one I just added is a fish oil. And that's because of the, I've got the new holistic vet and I'm really enjoying having a holistic vet. She suggested this for uh, the mitral valve disease that my three Cavaliers have. And then this is something to help their teeth. This is called Canadent, C-A-N-I-D-E-N-T. And this is, one that I've not heard any bad things. I've only heard good things. And I am on quite a few different discussion groups 
both on Facebook and also just through Dr. Judy Morgan and some other people that I follow. And this seems to have no bad ingredients. It seems to help my labs quite a bit. Their teeth look much better since I started this. The Cavaliers have bad teeth just inherently. I brush their teeth as well, so I do a little of both. But those are my supplements. We'll get back to now putting the rest of the supplements that I put directly into the batch if the batch. These are the ones that I don't put in the batch. And the way that I do this, and you've seen this if you watch other videos, I put this directly into my food processor and that way it gets thoroughly processed. I can't put this whole thing into this food processor so I cut it in half. And so I do half, half of a batch and then half of a batch. And it all usually fits in here. I'm pretty good at this. I've been doing this for about 10 years. I have have this almost down to a science. I still make a mess. I still forget things here and there. But for the most part, this is a process that I'm pretty familiar with. I make this every three days. This is part of the food processor that sits in the top. I use this for the other half of the supplements. And so I just start to divvy these up and I won't make you sit through it all, but I have labeled each top of everything that I give them. So you can see they all have labels from a label maker and that just keeps me organized. There's a lot of things here and I don't wanna screw up the amounts. And so I use the, the tops and I just turn them over so I can see them. And even though you'd think I'd know all this by, because I do this every three days, there's just too much for me to remember and I don't wanna screw it up. So I put half in one and then half in the other. And like I said, I won't make you sit through all this. I'm gonna put these supplements all in and then I'll come back and we'll process this food. Okay, so all the supplements are either in, half is in here, half is in here. And this just sits on the top of the top of the food processor. And then I'll save that for the second half of the batch. I use a large spoon to scoop this out, but I just basically cut this in half. I'm gonna move my food processor a little bit closer. It has nice little suction cup feet. And then I just have these kind of join here and then I use a rag and I put that over the top just causes me, just allows me to have less cleanup. And then I start to just move the food into the processor. I'm gonna put a little bit of the juice to get the supplements at the bottom. Now the ground food is very nice and ground up. The liver is fairly solid still, so that'll process when I use the food processor. But if you're doing this without processing this, then you wanna make sure that you definitely cut that liver into a lot smaller pieces. Also, if you're using, if you were able to find a pancreas, then you would wanna make sure that you cut that also into very small pieces. Most of the organs are a little bit tougher of a meat. And so you wanna make sure you're going to get that all nice and incorporated in so that they're not getting like all of it on one meal and then all of it in another meal. You're gonna see my dogs kind of fluttering around. They know that I'm a bit of a messy cook. So they stick around in case I dribble a little bit on the floor or if I overfill the processor, then sometimes it'll spray around and so they get all excited for that kind of stuff. So hopefully not today. It looks like I have the perfect amount for in here. I'm going to put a little bit more juice in here. And again, this, a lot of this cooked down, as you know, I only put one cup of water in here, but we've probably got, you know, four cups at this point. And then I'll show you the consistency that this food processor makes it so that you can see how it is that I divvy it up. And I'll talk a little bit more about the feeding portions as well and how much you should be feeding your dogs. I'm gonna start this up and 
started whirling away. Okay, I did slightly overfill that, so we've got a little bit that came out, but not too bad. None that the dogs were able to get, unfortunately for them. And then I take this black one out because again, I've got the supplements in there. And I set the top aside in my sink. And then I pour this into my container. And you will be able to see the consistency there. Now keep in mind that this will go into the refrigerator and so it will get quite a bit thicker. And so it'll come out like a very thick oatmeal, which is a perfect consistency for the dogs. Again, I have dogs with very few teeth. Uh, the labs have full teeth, but unfortunately, <laughs> they, I have to focus on the ones that don't have teeth and that would be the Cavaliers. I have two Cavaliers that have about 15 to 20 teeth that would be Brie and Charlie, the tricolors. But the little Blenheim, which is the kind of orange and white one, she has only four teeth. And again, they aren't in spots where they work together. They are in different spots. And really all it's doing is holding her tongue in at this stage. So uh, she doesn't have any working teeth. So then I put this second half into the food processor. And this is as simple as it is. I just then pulverize this, process this, and we have food for about three days. So let's talk about how much we're feeding our dogs. If you go to my YouTube channel and you look in my description box, it tells you that you wanna feed two to 3% of your dog's body weight or ideal body weight, depending if you've got a dog that's overweight you want or underweight you wanna feed them two to 3% of that. And so as an example, if you have a 19 kilogram dog, which is about 41 pounds, 14 ounces, if you do pounds, then you're really gonna to want to feed them between 380 and 570 grams of food. And if you use ounces, that would be 13.4 to 29.1 ounces. And so you just need to figure this out one time. It's not very difficult. I figured it out for all my dogs. And then I measured it on a food scale. This is my food scale. Um, it's clear. And I put a container on here and I measured out the amount of ounces. I use ounces, so I use measured out ounces, but this also does grams. So it would either be that 370 grams if I was looking at this one or 13.4 ounces. So that's how I figured it out. And I did it based on scoops. So I figured out, I feed my dogs with this food scooper. It's like a muffin scooper. And so I measured what um, the number of ounces would be on a scale. And then that told me, like as an example, my Cavaliers take two full flattened across scoops of food per meal. So four all together for a day. So I cut it in half and it's two each meal. So that's as easy as it is. You just need to do a small calculation I've had people just double check themselves by saying, hey, Jen, is, is this sound right? Carolyn did that recently and I she's, a, she's got a little bit bigger of a dog than I do, although it's similar to the labs. And so I helped her figure that out. If you have any questions, just give me a comment below and I will certainly respond. I'm usually responding within the same day. If we're in different time zones, different countries, that may be your next day, but I usually get to my comments on a daily basis. All right, so let me get the rest of this in here and then we will get this done. And I do use a silicone liner. This is also in my description box below. This is a Hamilton Beach, very large crock pot. I love it, or slow cooker. I guess crock pot is a brand, a slow cooker. What I love about the slow cooker is I put it on the eight hours on low and then if for some reason I can't get to it right away, it will turn it on warm and it does warm for like four or six hours. I'm not really sure. I've never really let it 
go the entire time. I turn it off at some point, but I believe it's like four hours on warm. So that really helps me out. Uh, a little trick I use is I turn this on before I go to bed. If you're comfortable doing something like that, I put this on before I go to bed. And when I wake up in the morning is when I process the meat. So that helps me out quite a bit as well. Love the silicone liner because I can now pick this up and all the rest of the bits can go right into the processor. I have too much in here. And then this goes right into the sink. I soak that in the sink. I put a little bit of white vinegar in there. It gets rid of that smell. So if I use it for something else, it doesn't smell like liver or broccoli and cauliflower or are a really bad slow cook smell as well. So it just depends on what I'm cooking. Then I'm going to put my supplements in as well. And I'm just gonna sprinkle this on top. I'm gonna pull out the top again, put this top on. Give this another whirl. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to show you the consistency of this and I'm gonna set this down. It's a little bit heavy. Move out this stuff out of the way, but I did wanna show you. So right now it's like very liquidy oatmeal, <laughs> but when this sets in the fridge, it becomes more like canned dog food, that consistency where it's it's gonna go in, in my, ice cream scoop it's going to be nice and compacted in there and then um, I do warm up the food on a very very low temperature in the microwave because we gently cook this to preserve all those nutrients we don't want to then put it on high in the microwave to warm it up dogs do need their food to be at least at room temperature it's better for the dogs for their digestion so I measured this out onto a plate for each of the dogs. And then I put it in the microwave and I just put it on for a couple of minutes on a very, very low setting. Like for me, it's 40 or 50 if just depending, but uh, for this, it would be 40% on in the microwave. And that way it's just room temperature. It's not warm, it's just room temperature and, but no chill to it. It is just easier for them to digest and so Again, Dr. Judy Morgan and all the holistic vets usually recommend that it is not cold for them to eat, so not straight out of the refrigerator. Another tip is if you feed your dog in a bowl, I feed my dogs in different bowls, but just to give you an example, I feed my dogs in slow feed bowls. These, this is one for one of my Cavaliers, and I wash these in the dishwasher every day. So you just wanna treat this like you would your own plates so I wash these on a daily basis, so that's why these are in my dishwasher right now. All the dogs are super excited because they think that something is going to be happening, but I made it without dropping anything, so we're all good. Thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions, please indicate so in the comments below, and I'm gonna get this in the refrigerator. Thanks so much for watching today, and thanks for helping your dogs live their happiest, healthiest lives. I'll see you in the next video.